All right, praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm thankful for another opportunity to be in Rehoboth Sunday School, where the learning never stops. We're thankful for another day that God has made, another opportunity at life. And so we're about to go before the Lord and thank him in prayer. Loving God, we're thankful for this day that you have made. God, we thank you for health and strength, for waking us up in our right mind. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace, Lord. Your mercies are brand new every morning, God. So we want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the sustenance that you have given us, Lord, to sustain life, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that you will touch our hearts, touch our minds, God. Touch the heart of each one that's coming into this class today, God. Help us to receive of your word that you have for us, God. And may your presence continually abide and comfort us. Heal us, God, from any infirmities. We want to give you the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I'm always thankful to be in Rehoboth Sunday School with you because you all are the guests of honor. And so without you, Sunday School wouldn't be much. We know God makes all things possible, but if there was no audience to listen, I'd be doing this in vain. And so I'm thankful for each one of you today. I want to give honor to God who is the head of my life. He is the savior of my soul. Salvation is something that we need. If we are not saved, we are lost and we don't want to go out into eternity lost. And so I'm thankful for God that he reached out to me and saved my soul. I want to give honor to the angel of Rehoboth International Ministries, the messenger, the pastor, Superintendent John Hall Jr. He's a great man of God, a great friend. Uh, he it's a blessing when he calls you and you get to laugh and catch up. So it's always a blessing. We appreciate you, Pastor. Appreciate you. And we're praying for you. And we're looking forward to a word today. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> we also want to give honor to elect Lady Sheila Hall, who is the fragrance of Rehoboth International Ministry. She's a blessing and an asset to the ministry, a great friend. Uh, so we appreciate Lady Hall today. And also to you, Rehoboth International Ministries family, you know there's no church like the Rehoboth International Ministries. And if you don't believe me, you need to come on through. And come on through at 1030 on Facebook Live. You'll see what we're talking about. And to you, the family of God, I love and appreciate each and every one of you. We are all connected through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'm thankful for that today. Now my exhortation it's coming from a word, and I believe I shared this word a while back. It's probably during the summer, uh, but this word came back, and it was the word circumspect. Now, circumspect is defined as heedful of potential consequences. So Ephesians chapter 5, verses in 16, 15 and 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And you did not have to go too far to, or you don't have to look on too deep into the news to figure out what we are talking about today. We're talking about people that are doing things that are uh, not right. We're talking about, uh, if you look up the word insurrection, <laughs> you know, you're looking up uh, the word rebellion, you know, uh, people are doing things that are not right. They're going against the order of the way certain things are set up. And so as we observe these things, we have to be aware. This is the perilous times. <laughs> you know, we're in perilous times. And so uh, the message has always been the same as of late. And that's to be ready, you know, be ready to meet the Lord. Be ready because there are things that are happening. You know, at any moment, God could say, all right, enough is enough. I'm taking my people out of here. And so we have to be ready when the trumpet sounds. So we have to walk circumspectly, not as a fool. Somebody that's a fool is walking around not knowing what's going on. So as we see current events, as we see people acting a fool, so to speak, be aware that these things are happening for a reason. Now, in last week's lesson, we looked at the topic called to proclaim, and that was coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, covering verses 14 through 22. We spoke about the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus Christ and what he came to do. You know, and how the scriptures declare that for this cause, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Now, Jesus declared that he came to preach to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty 
those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And like the song says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. So when we think about everything that's going on, we think about the pain that people are going through right now. Jesus is the answer. He's the only answer. He's the only way. He came to heal the brokenhearted. When we are broken in pieces, he has come to put us back together again. <clears throat> now, in this lesson, we look at the topic, Call to Significance, and that's coming out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, covering verses 1 through 11. So we're going to go ahead and get our Bible reading in for this lesson. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes that were taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, <clears throat> verse when we go to verse 1, it says, And the Cana passes the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. So <laughs> I'm starting right out the gate with a question. And the question is, are you pressing to hear the word of God? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I looked at this verse and I'm like, well, wow, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. And that shows that the people... They had a desire, you know, the, the scriptures declared to us, um, you know, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, you know, they shall be filled. And so we have to have a hunger for the word of God. And we see that in this event that there were people that were pressing onto Jesus. Now, when we look at uh, prior, we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. If we remember our lesson from last week, Jesus had began his public ministry. So um, the people, his fame, his fame went about, people uh, began to flock to him. And so here he was in this event, he's at the Lake, Lake Gennesaret, and the people are pressing upon him to hear the word of God. There was a, a great crowd that had come, and they had a desire to hear what Jesus had to say. Now, if you get a chance, type in the comments, we need the word. <laughs> now, coming out of Luke chapter 4, like I shared, Jesus' fame is growing. He was preaching and teaching in all the synagogues of Galilee. He was healing the sick. He was casting out devils. You know, he was, he was the, the ultimate weapon that was being dropped on, on the enemy. <laughs> he came to destroy the works of the devil. So his fame is going throughout all the region. And the scripture says all the region around about. So there were people that were coming all over to hear about Jesus and to hear what he's saying. Now, here in this setting, he's at the body of water called Lake Gennesaret. It is named that because it is in the shape of a heart, but it's commonly known as the Sea of Galilee. So uh, Lake Gennesaret may not sound familiar, but when you hear Sea of Galilee, you're, okay, I, I've heard of it before. Now, there were nine cities that stood on its shores, and this lake measured 13 miles long north to south and seven miles wide east to west. Now, there are Many uh, water type events that the scriptures talk about, especially in the Gospels. Um, you know, we hear about Jesus walking upon the sea, um, Jesus telling his disciples, let's go on over to the other side. 
Um, you know, and in this event, it's the, the call of his disciples. So all of these things take place on what's called the Sea of Galilee. Now, verse 2 says, And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. So every day there were fishermen that did their jobs. Um, they will prepare their equipment for the next day. So, you know, you come in just like any job. Um, sometimes you put things away in preparation for the next day. So this would entail for fishermen, they would wash their nets. They would bring their boats in close to land to prevent them from drifting away. Now, these boats were anywhere from 20 to 30 feet long. And to put it in perspective, the average car is about 14 to 15 feet long. So two cars back to back, so to speak. Um, but if you're talking about that, that, that car called a roller skate car, <laughs> it'd probably be about, about four of those, four to, four to six of those. <laughs> but the real name of that car is, is the smart car. It's a little, I call it the roller skate car. <laughs> now, these boats on the shore meant that the fishermen were done for the day. Um, and these boats usually worked in pairs to collaborate the netting of schools of fish. So here in verse 3, it says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So Jesus, uh, one thing we have to realize is that Jesus establishes relationships. So if we're going from Luke chapter 4, and then we go right into chapter 5, we don't hear about him um, we only really hear about one thing, and that was um, that Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. So uh, he establishes relationships. This was not the first time that he met Peter. He had met Peter before, um, you know. Um, and so he established relationships. He didn't just assume like, oh, here's a boat. I'm just going to step in it. No, he had a relationship. And so we have to remember that. Now, he healed Peter's mother-in-law in the, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 and verse 38. So he was not just assuming or just overstepping his place. He had a relationship. And so he, it says that he prayed him or he asked him. So Jesus, he was polite about it. He didn't just assume. He asked Peter. So he says to thrust out or push out a little bit from the land. And then he begins to sit down and begins to teach the people. So when Jesus does this, uh, he is in essence creating what is called a theater effect. Now, uh, you can actually Google this, but when voice travels across water, it is amplified. So uh, Jesus was the blessing. Um, he was blessing the multitude because, the, it's, you know, when we look at verse 1, it says that there were people that were pressed upon him to hear the word of God. It wasn't just a small group of people. There were many people that were gathered around about to hear him. And so he was being a blessing to them, and he wants to make sure that they could hear the word of God. He wants, to hear, wants them to hear the word clearly. Now, this is a blessing because you can only fit so many people in a building. <laughs> you know, uh, you can only fit so many people into a synagogue. Not to mention, um, you know, when you're talking about Gentile people, there were restrictions on them, um, you know, from being in certain places with the Jews. So um, there were people that were Gentiles that come to hear Jesus. Now, in this pandemic, you know, the church has been feeling a certain type of way, but God's goal is for the gospel to go out into all the world. You know, because of the pandemic, the gospel is probably reaching more households than ever before. You know, and, you know, I know we, we care about buildings and gatherings and that's all well and good. But God cares about people hearing the word. And so what God has done, he has allowed, though the buildings of the, the building are closed, uh, the, 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 the Internet is open. You know, the World Wide Web is called that for a reason. It goes out into all the world. And so there are people that... Um, we're not able to hear certain people preaching. They were not able to hear certain messages. They were not able to have certain experiences, see certain things. But because of all of this, God has blown the doors wide open where you can, where really no one has an excuse. <laughs> Just about everyone has a cell phone or some sort of internet capable device. 
And so there is no excuse for anyone to say, I didn't get a chance to hear the word of God. So God does all of this for a reason. You know, we look at the little picture, but God sees the big picture. And he has catapulted a lot of us out of our comfort zone. You know, he has put us in a place, you know, who could imagine, you know, <laughs> um, people of a certain generation, you know, there are people 80 years old plus getting on the internet, getting on Zoom, you know, um, navigating, learning how to do things. And then to me, that's a blessing. So, you know, the word of God is not bound by this pandemic, you know, or building gathering restrictions. You know, um, when I think about uh, Bishop, Bishop, our Bishop J. Drew Shear, his church is Greater Emmanuel, uh, Greater Emmanuel Church, Church of God in Christ. And so uh, it can only hold so many people, you know, but uh, when he sometimes when he's online preaching or when they have something, there's 1300 people watching. So that many people cannot fit in that building. But through technology, through what God has allowed, he has allowed the gospel and his certain experiences to go out through all the world. So God's not God's word is not bound by a pandemic or any other thing. You know, I have not physically been to my cousin Mark Winch Church in Kingston, Jamaica, but it's a blessing to actually be there virtually. I can join his service. I can hear him preach. And it's been a blessing to me. So you may not have been physically in Rehoboth Sunday School in a building, but guess what? You're in Rehoboth Sunday School right now, and hopefully it is a blessing to you. So if you get a chance, type in the comment, God knows how to reach you. So verse four, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. So that word there, you can say drought, drought, you can say draft, but we're going to explain. <laughs> so Jesus finishes, teaches, and he tells teaching and he tells Simon, um, now launch out into the deep. So that word mean, that word launch means to set into motion. It means get going into the deep. So then he says, let down your net for a draught or a draft. So draught is the equivalent of the American spelling of a draft. So if you hear me say it different ways, sometimes I get to it like draught, draft. <laughs> it's basically the same, the same thing. So some of y'all are waiting till 1030 to have church, but that's okay. But watch this. <laughs> Jesus is going to teach you something. And then he's going to say, all right, now let's go deeper. <laughs> all right, all right, y'all ain't listening today. Nobody who's online, ain't nobody online today. <laughs> God is going to teach you something. And then he's going to say, okay, now let's go deeper. <laughs> now type in the comments if you get a chance. Let's go deeper. <laughs> now, when we look at this, did Jesus teach them and say, all right, now I'm out of here? No. <laughs> Jesus gave the command. And Jesus was in the boat. So uh, when we think about it, you know, Jesus didn't, he's not going to drop something on you and just leave you alone. He says, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. And so um, Jesus is in the boat with Peter. He's not leaving him on the seashore. He's, Jesus is not on the seashore saying, all right, now go out and go do something. No, Jesus is with him. And it's the same thing with us. When God wants us to do something, we're not alone. He's with us. You know, the scriptures declare what Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And so we have to be with Jesus. Jesus has to be with us if we're going to accomplish anything. Uh, verse 5, it says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So uh, <laughs> when we look at this, uh, man has a habit of saying but to God. <laughs> you know, when, when, when God tells you sit down, we shouldn't look for a chair. <laughs> but when we look at, at Simon's attitude, uh, the flesh will always protest. You know, even Jesus said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, the spirit wants to obey God and the will of God. But, you know, let's let's keep it 100 today. There's times that we just don't feel like it. You know, uh, Romans chapter eight and verse 13 says, for if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. And if you get a chance to look at that scripture, 
Spirit there is capital S. And what do we say about capital S? That's referring to the Holy Ghost. So we need the Holy Ghost. You know, if you through the Holy Ghost do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So the Holy Ghost power that's going to help you to overcome. Yes, there's times we wake up. We don't feel like praying. We don't feel like going to church. We don't feel like reading the word of God. But we have to overcome the flesh. You know, my spirit loves to fast and pray, but my flesh, you know, my flesh does not want to read the Bible. Uh, you know, so Simon puts out a statement uh, of the flesh just like we do. And that's but but what comes after the statement is what really counts. You know, we could put up our little resistance, but what we do afterward is what really counts. So that word, nevertheless, the synonyms of that word are in spite of, but or even so. So Simon Lee, uh, Simon respectfully puts his feelings out there. He's like, God, I'm gonna let you know what's going on. <laughs> really, he's talking to Jesus, who is God, but at that moment, he's still unaware of certain things. But he's saying, Jesus, uh, you just don't understand, but nevertheless, I'm gonna do what you say. So <laughs> first, he's, he calls him master. So I noticed that at first he says master. He says, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. So Simon's letting him know, I've already done what I was supposed to do, but nevertheless, in spite of, I'm going to listen to what you say. Now, fishermen worked at night in this region. Uh, when we think about the Middle East, you know, it's a hot climate, and those temperatures cause uh Warmer temperatures cause fish to be less active during the day. So just like humans in the heat, they want to cool off too. <laughs> so working at night was not only good for them catching fish because the fish were more active, but also the working conditions for the fishermen as well. Um, you know, if you, if anyone is out in the heat for an extended amount of time, you talk about Middle East heat, we're not talking about you know, necessarily Florida weather is hot in Florida too, but when you go over the Middle East, anybody that's been over in the Middle East, they could tell you that's a different type of heat. <laughs> so can you imagine being out on the water in the middle of the day in the heat, no shade? Come on now. And so them working towards the evening time or when it gets darker at nighttime, those were better working conditions. And so, uh, you know, I've shared before, I'm a fish person, I have fish, and when they are inactive, they, they go towards the bottom and they stay there. But when they're active, they're swimming all over the place. They come up to the surface, do all kinds of stuff. So if we look at, at Simon's statement, imagine his thoughts. You know, he's saying, we usually catch something, but this night, we didn't catch anything. Now, check this out. Sometimes God allows things to dry up so he could show us something. <laughs> All right, y'all wait until 1030, but I'm having church right now. Sometimes God, I'm sorry for the repetition, but hey, repetition is a good teacher. I'll say it again. <laughs> Sometimes God allows things to dry up so he could show us something. Now, God allowed the brook Cherith to dry up because God had better accommodations for the prophet Elijah. So y'all playing around today. Y'all don't want to have church until 1030. And it's okay if you want to wait, but I'm going to enjoy myself right now. You know, uh, Elijah, now, now check this out. Y'all, Some of y'all say, brother, brother, when you, you reaching, you reaching. Now check this out. <laughs> Elijah had to cook the meat that the ravens brought to him. But God had someone ready to cook for him. Come on now. <laughs> oh, you may have lost your job in this pandemic, but God has allowed it to dry up so that he could give you something better. All right, I understand some of y'all don't believe me. <laughs> but Psalm chapter 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So if you get a chance, type in the comments, God always has something better. See, God is a God of upgrades. He's into upgrading each and every one of us. And so when we look at Peter, we look at this situation, they toiled all the night, they didn't catch anything, uh, you know, 
Um, we know maybe there was times something, but come on, like one fish, they said they didn't catch anything. <laughs> But God knows how to do something. He knows how to show us. He knows how to teach us lessons. <clears throat> so verses 6 and 7 says, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ships, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Come on now. <laughs> so y'all y'all were looking doom and gloom at the beginning of verse 5 here. But as we transition into verse 6 and 7, we see what God begins to do. <laughs> now, nothing turns into something when you obey God. You know, we need a what's called a nevertheless faith. Uh, type in the comments if you get a chance. We need a nevertheless faith. Now, <clears throat> some of us, you know, we're going to say, God, I only have enough to pay these bills or get some food and that's it. Nevertheless, I'm going to pay my tithe. See, God said in Malachi chapter 3, he said to prove me. In other words, he said, try me, put me to the test. I'm going to bless you so much you can't even contain it all. Now, God wants us to know that if we do it his way, we will be overwhelmed with blessing. You know, his word does not lie. He's not a man that he should lie. All his promises are yea and amen. You know, and so uh, when we look at Simon, he could have leaned on his own understanding, but nevertheless, he did what Jesus said. You know, these, these, these were professional fishermen. You know, this one like their first time out. They knew how to fish. They knew where to go. They knew what times to cast down their nets. They, this was their lifestyle. This was their, their income. This is how they lived. And so they knew what they were doing. But for them to catch nothing, come on now. Now, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, a very familiar portion of Scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And so when we look at this, you know, they, Peter had his own understanding, but he said, nevertheless. We might have our own understanding, but we need to say, nevertheless. And so when we look and see what happens, their harvest of fish was so much that not just one boat became overwhelmed, but both the boats working together, so they both began to sink. Y'all y'all don't y'all need to understand who God is and what he could do today. God could do anything. God knows how to bless. He knows how to blow the doors off of anything. Now, verse 8, it says, When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now, <clears throat> Simon had never seen anything like this. You know, it's one thing to be a fisherman and to catch some stuff. You know, you get in a good haul, and hey, the boats are able to contain it. But in this haul, the boats were, they started to sink. They had never, never encountered something like this. Now, now, Pastor Hall, Pastor Hall, don't steal my message. The title of a message could be when God blows your mind. But then, I'm just joking. You, you can go, go ahead and preach that. The word of God is not bound. It's a free for all. <laughs> but Peter realized that God could do exceedingly abundantly above all that he could have asked or even thought about. He blew his mind to the point where, where Peter began to consider himself. He considered his own worth. You know, um, has God ever blessed you so much um, that you wondered, God, why me? Uh, I, I've been in that position. I'm like, God, uh, you know, and it just makes you want to love God even more. You're like, God, I'm not deserving of this at all. And so Peter began to consider himself. Uh, you know, we, we need to remember the song. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. So uh, now if God hasn't blessed you so much. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you've not had this experience, the first thing you need to do is pray, uh, repent of any sin. Uh, there's a lot of times we have these pet sins that God's been dealing with us about, but we want to hold on to them. We don't want to let them go. First thing we have to do is we have to let those things go. Um, just like Pastor talks about in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And you could also read Malachi, chapter 3. And when you do that, you're going to see what God's going to do. So when, we, when you think about your blessings, 
uh, even just the fact that you're looking at this broadcast, um, you know, that you made it through 2020. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that didn't make it. You know, so far in this pandemic in this country, there, there have been about 370,000 people that have died. And around the world, 1.92 million. And a lot of times we could say, well, in perspective of world, world population, that's not a lot. But every life matters, you know. Uh, I often share with people that I know, a friend of mine, a minister friend of mine, his wife was 30 years old. And she died due to the virus the day before, the day after her son's fifth birthday. So when we look at these numbers, people are not just numbers. They're lives. They're, they're people that they're somebody's mother, they're somebody's father, on and on and on, somebody's family member. So everybody's important. And those people that have passed, when we look at that and we consider that the fact that we're still here, a lot of us haven't taken no vaccine or anything. It's nothing but the grace of Almighty God. You know those people, folks, you know those people, they've been carrying on in the stores and stuff. You hear people coughing and sneezing. You're like, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I need to get out of here. <laughs> so God, God, uh, think about the people in your workplace that have probably contracted the virus, but he kept you safe. All of these things is the blessings and the mercy of God. Now, when we look at this, <clears throat> first, the first thing we see, Simon called him master, but when he experienced this event, he calls him Lord. So I'm thinking when Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law, it wasn't that much of a blessing. However, this act was a blessing because he considered his own life. Now, I'm just joking, <laughs> but, but think about it. You know, when, when, when Jesus healed his mother-in-law, he didn't call him Lord, but in this event, he called him Lord. First, he calls him master. Then he calls him Lord. He begins to see some things about Jesus Christ. Now, God has done things for us that maybe just didn't register. You know, that God has blocked a lot of things in our lives. Uh, you know, we, we pray the prayer and we hear the phrase that he protects us from danger seen and unseen. Uh, you know, how close did we come to catching the virus, those that uh, have not got it yet, or those that have got it and came through with no, uh, you know, major, major side effect? No one was, uh, if you haven't been on a ventilator, you know, if you were able to stay at home and recover, all of these things are a blessing in the mercy of God. And so sometimes there is, God does things for us that didn't register. There's times that God has told us, uh, I know I've been on the road and I might go home a certain way. And there's been times like the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all say, Brother Wayne, you just crazy. Well, pray for me. There's times the Holy Ghost is like, don't go that way. And I'm like, but I want to go that way because I can get home quicker. But then I feel that urge like, okay, don't go that way. And I don't know. Nothing may not happen. I may not hear anything about it on the news. But maybe there's somebody out there. They may have decided to look down at their phone at a certain moment. And maybe that would cause me to be in a wreck or whatever. And so I look at those things as God's protection. I don't take those things lightly. Um, and so that's why one of the reasons we need to follow the voice of God and not lean to our own understanding. So God has done many things for us. Uh, you know, when God blesses us, we should realize it's not necessarily because of us, but because of who he is. Uh, you know, when we, we pray the prayer, you know, um, we, 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 we bless God and we thank God, not just for the blessings because of who he is. And when we look at uh, what the scriptures declare, that God is love. He is, he is love personified. And so there's no one that loves us more than God. We may love family members. We may love significant others. But there's no one that loves us more than God because he is love. And verses 9 and 10, it says, See, did I read eight? Did I read eight? Yes, I did. Okay, verse nine and ten. For he was astonished in all that were with him at the draught or draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And so not only was Simon's mind blown uh, at the amount of fishes that they were taking and what they were experiencing where the boats began to sink, uh, there, 
his his partner's minds were blown as well because this was not a, a, a ordinary hall. This was not quote unquote a great hall of fishes, a great hall of fishes. Like, all right, yeah, man, this is great. And it could go on the shore. But <laughs> when the boats begin to sink, like, oh my goodness, this is crazy right now. <laughs> and, and we have to realize that God is not a small scale God. <laughs> now, if you get a chance, please type in the comments. God likes to show up and show out. <laughs> And for those of you that doesn't know what that don't know what that means, it means that God likes to show you things. God God does things big. You know, he doesn't he's not a God of uh, yes, thank God for the what we call little blessings, but God knows how to open up the doors of big blessings. He knows how to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think. He knows how to 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 uh, overwhelm you. He knows how to bring tears of joy to your eye. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Simon's admission of not being in the right place is where God can start his work. And it's the same thing with us that when we realize, when we admit, God, I'm not in the right place. God is now saying, okay, now that you've confessed that, now you have given me something to work with. Now, when God uh, establishes a foundation, then he can build upon it. You know, and when God cleans us up, he's going to put us to you. So just like anything, sometimes, you know, we, we, we say that phrase, I want to start with a clean slate. And that means to clear off all the foolishness, clear off everything that's been distracting. It's the same thing that God wants to do in our lives. He wants to clear all that stuff up and begin anew, and then he wants to begin to build. Uh, and so the foundation, our foundation is Jesus Christ. And as we stand upon him, he begins to build us up. Now, when you wash your dishes... Do you put them away never to use them again? No, you clean them up so that when it comes time for you to use them, you, they're ready to go. <laughs> All right, I'll say that again. Oh, brother, when you and them repetition. Uh, you clean your dishes up so that they're ready to go for the next time you use them. So it's the same thing with us. God cleans us up so that we are ready to go when he is ready to use us. Now, God cleans a vessel and that vessel is then fit for use. So Jesus tells Simon that he will become a fisher of men. Now, God, God didn't clean us up so that we could do Netflix and chill for the rest of our lives. But he clothed us or he, he cleansed us so that we could catch men. Now, Jesus said, ye, in other words, uh, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And so Jesus saved us and he allowed us to be here. And definitely uh, for such a time as this, uh, you know, uh, where, where, where people need to hear God, about God more than any time than in our history. You know, we look at everything that's going on. There are people dying, you know, uh, those things that happen in the capital. People lost their lives over or what I consider foolishness, what I consider a trick of the enemy, you know, you, you stepped out into eternity. And I'm not, I'm not down on the people. I'm just saying that the, the devil, he can mess your mind up so much that you go somewhere and you start going to climb through a window. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Lord have mercy. So God saved us. He allowed us to be here for such a time as this. He has called us and he has left us to be a light in a world that is ever growing darker. Uh, and so we're here for a reason. He has allowed us to come through 2020 for a reason. He allowed us to be in 2021 for a reason. Um, and so, uh, you know, you don't have to go far. It doesn't have to be no big news flash. People are dying, you know, uh, some to everlasting reward and some to everlasting punishment. So, you know, saints are being called home. All kinds of people are being called to stand before God. Now, if you get a chance, type in the comments, help me, Jesus, because we need his help today. Now, <clears throat> Jesus had to tell Simon, don't be afraid. So we look at the end of verse 9, he says, fear not from henceforth, thou shalt catch men. So the boats begin to sink. Simon comes with some, man, I'm, I'm probably about to die. Lord, get away from me. Don't worry, Peter, don't be afraid. You know, uh, you're going to, I got something for you to do. <laughs> and that's a blessing today. So when we look at that phrase, 
fear not. Fear not is in the Bible 365 times. I wonder why the number 365 sounds familiar. Oh, that's about how many days in a year. So if God had to tell you every day something, he would probably tell you, I love you. And the next thing he would tell you is, fear not. <laughs> so verse 11 says, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, we, we just got this monster hall we just got we about to we about to get some some bling bling with this hall that we just got but it says but they forsook all and followed him <laughs> oh my goodness now <clears throat> when god calls you uh no other professions matter <laughs> a lot of us we invest into degrees all that there's nothing wrong with having ambition but when god calls you all of those things don't matter. When God calls you, all of those things are on the back burner. Um, you know, what I do for work, that's just to make a living. That's just to pay bills. But what I do right now, this is my life. You know, my life is to serve God. My life is to do what he called me to do. Uh, you know, when I was born into this world, God had a plan for me. You know, and that's that I share the word of the day on Facebook. Jeremiah just happened to be. Uh, when I wrote out the Sunday school thing, uh, where it talks about Jeremiah 20, 29 and 11, lo and behold, the scripture of the day in my Bible app was Jeremiah 29 and 11. So God, he has a plan for each and every one of us. And so uh, when I was born into this world, I had my own desires. I had my own ambitions. <laughs> you know, my parents, they probably watch and they probably laugh. And, you know, when, when I was younger, I wanted to be a marine biologist, but the only part that I got out of that was the marine part. So I ended up being in the military <laughs> and being in the military, all of that was part of the plan of God. I did not necessarily want to go, so to speak, but I warmed up to it. I went, <laughs> I needed it. I thank God for it to this day. God knows what he's doing. Uh, and so it's helped me in a lot of areas in my life in, in terms of discipline, in terms of overcoming, in terms of my thought patterns. So all of those things God allowed for a reason, and he has allowed me to be hopefully a blessing to you today. So there are things that we endeavor to be, but there are things that God calls us to be. And so we can work on a job, nothing wrong with that, but our job is second fiddle to what God has for us. Now, we think about the story of Cinderella. We're almost done. I'm trying to get out of here. We think about Cinderella and the glass slipper. Uh, there, there's a lot of people trying to put on a shoe that doesn't fit. <laughs> they're trying to do all these things and they ended up coming to these doors that are shut. And that's because you had to pray and ask, God, what do you want me to do? I, I know what I want to do, but God, what do you want me to do? And so when God opens the door, the scripture declares, no man can shut that door. What's for you is for you. And so you may come to many uh, shut doors, but just pray and ask. You know, sometimes, I know me, I've been spiritually spoiled before. Like, God, I don't want to do that job. I don't want to do this job. And it wasn't until God had to soften me up a little, I had to humble myself, right? Okay, God, nevertheless, <laughs> that's that nevertheless we're talking about, nevertheless faith. And so when we humble ourselves, say, okay, God, I'll do this. That's when God begins to open doors. Now, you ever wonder where the fashion police are when somebody's wearing something they have no business wearing? They may be wearing something that's too tight or whatever the case. And you're like, man, somebody should have stopped them before they came out the door. Well, we do the same thing with our lives. We put on these things that don't fit <laughs> and we think we look good, right? <laughs> but as much as we laugh, you know, that's what we do in our lives sometimes, you know, in all our ways, we have to acknowledge him and he will direct our path. He will tell us and he will put us in the place where we need to be. <clears throat> and we can say, God, I have a degree in this. You know, people invest time, money in these degrees, all those things. But nevertheless, we have to do what God wants us to do. So the word forsook is defined as abandon, leave or quit. So uh, tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to feel like you need to 
uh, abandon your job. You feel like you need to forsake your job and just quit and stay home. <laughs> but you can't do that because you have to make a living. Now, they park the boats. Uh, you don't park a boat, but I just said that to be funny. They park their boats and they forgot about their nets. It says they, and they followed him. It said they forsook all. They forgot about everything. They left the net. They left the boats and they started following Jesus. So think about it. Did they have a thought of, man, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make a living? But the call of God will make you drop whatever you're doing and follow Jesus. It's going to be a passion. Uh, it's going to be something that, um, you know, when that true call comes, you answer that call, you're like, man, forget about everything else. This is what I'm doing right here. <laughs> and so that's the true call of God. Now, the question I like to ask is, are you called to significance? And the answer is, yes, you are. And as I shared before, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say of the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So God already has a plan for your life and a calling on your life. The question is, will you forsake and abandon what your plans are and follow him? Now, Psalm 16 and 11 tells us, in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So if you get a chance, please type in the comments. There is no way like God's way. <clears throat> so that concludes our lesson for today. My prayer is that you were blessed. And remember that you are called to significance. Not everybody is called to stand in the pulpit. Not everybody is called to teach a class. But you are called to be a light of the world. You are called to be a witness. You are called to be an example of the believer. And by the grace of God, next week, We'll be in a lesson entitled Call the Heal, and that's coming out of the Gospel of Mark chapter 2. If you get a chance, read it. Read Mark chapter 2 for next week. Praise God. We pray that you donate to the ministry, dollar sign the rim. You give on the app, Givelify. Name of the Church of Rehoboth International Ministries in Warren, Michigan. The address is 31731 Shona Road. You can also give on the church website, www.rehobothinternational.org. God bless you, family, people of God. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. You know what to do when this broadcast ends. You hit that share button. So we're about to pray and dismiss. Loving God, we're thankful for your word that was shared. My prayers that each one tuning in was blessed. I pray that each one received the divine revelation of your word today, God, something that will touch their hearts and remain in their hearts and their thoughts and minds, God. We pray that you will heal sick bodies on today in the name of Jesus. By the kingdom authority and of the blood of the land, let them be saved, be delivered, and set free in Jesus' name, God. Lord, you know the needs. You know the broken hearts, God. You know what needs to be fixed. So we pray that you will fix it, Jesus. Heal our land. We give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you, people of God. By the grace of God, we will see you next week.